and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new stamp set, Tiny Birthday Friends, and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be introducing two brand new word dies that I just loved called Giant Happy Birthday and Giant Happy Birthday to You. And we'll be introducing a brand new set of stencils called Confetti Stencils. They're super cute. So let's go ahead and check them out. First up, we're gonna check out the brand new Tiny Friends stamp set. And this set is so cute. Our Tiny Friends are now celebrating birthdays. They have cute little party hats and party noisemakers. They're holding presents and there's all these fun little characters and different things that you can mix and match with them. They're just so fun and so adorable. These guys are so fun to color in, so fun to create little scenes. And we have a lot of products that go really great with them, including the two new dies we're introducing in this video and a stamp set we're gonna be introducing to you tomorrow. So now you can see we also have our cute little tiny friends our dogs and cats are also celebrating in the birthday fun one of our tiny friends is ready to hit the pinata right there and how cute is that little pinata i just love how tiny and adorable it is we also have tiny little accessories. So we have a cupcake and a cupcake with a candle. We have a larger cake on a cake stand, some really cute little balloons. Then we also have a pile of presents. Of course, you need a pile of presents for a birthday. And then we have these little confetti sprinkles and they can go underneath the pinata to look like the candy coming out, but they also fit perfectly in the cake too. So you could stamp little pretty colored confetti right into your cake as well. Next up, we're gonna add color to these bun images. And these guys are so much fun to color in. Now they are super tiny. So I like to use usually two markers and sometimes I'll just use one. So if you wanted to make a quick and easy card with these guys, you could just use one marker for each color and color them that way and it's gonna look great. But I always, always love to add a little bit of shading. So I'll have one dark marker and one light marker and I'll blend them that way. So for his shirt, I'll add the dark marker and then blend it out with the light, just like that. And it gives it just a little extra kind of special look to the character. Characters. I think it's so much fun to color in their clothes and accessories. And the way I like to pick colors for that is I'll kind of look at what my card design is going to be. So maybe I have a stencil background or pattern paper. I'll pick colors out of those and then use those colors to color in their clothes and accessories. So everything coordinates and looks really nice. And it's really, really fun to color in their outfits. And sometimes I'll just imagine what I might want to wear. Like I love her little turquoise and purple dress. I really want that dress now. It's super cute. <laughs> so I'll color everything in and just kind of add some fun festive colors you can play around. There's no right or wrong for these guys. I also love to color in these characters as people that I know or people in my life. So I'll try to think of one of my loved ones, one of my friends, and see, oh, okay, I'm going to color this character just like them. And that's what the, makes these tiny friends just so much fun. For my cute tiny pets here, I'm gonna color in the dog like my dog Daphne, super cute. And then the cat, I'm going to color in like my cat pumpkin that I had growing up. She was a beautiful calico and it's a really fun way to color in a cat or a dog when you do the fun little spots. So you'll see there, I'll bring in all those different colors just like she had. And you'll see just how adorable and sweet she is. And to blend those out, I'll take a very light gray marker just so that everything kind of looks smooth and not just like circle dots on the kitty cat.
Now that all of my characters are colored in, it's time to use the coordinating dies. So here they are, and you can bend them apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate them. You're gonna take those coordinating dies and line them up with the stamped images, hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through a die cut machine, and you'll have perfectly cut out cute little tiny friends every time. And then here is a look at all of the images from the set. How cute are these guys? I love them so much. I love the two in the upper right kind of high-fiving. And what's really great about them is that you can mix and match them with the cute accessories that we have in the set. You can see here that we've put the cake in between these two and it looks like they're both kind of coming out to get a piece of cake. He can hold the balloons, she can hold the little cupcakes. So you can see how you can really mix and match the adorable little items. You've got the confetti coming out of the pinata and then those sweet gifts as well. Now we're gonna take a look at the new dies and we have giant happy birthday and giant happy birthday to you. You guys have been loving the giant sending big hugs and we thought it would be so much fun to have these styles in a birthday theme because I know I always need to make birthday cards and these are great for super quick cards. So here you can see we have our happy birthday which looks really great on a portrait style card and our happy birthday to you which looks awesome on a landscape style card. Now the good thing is, is you can mix and match these in any which way depending on what style you're going for. So the happy birthday to you does fit on a portrait style and the happy birthday does look good on a landscape style card too so you can really have fun with these and mix and match and we're going to be showing you super cute ideas in this video and showing you some amazing design team cards at the end that have even more ideas with how to use these dies Next up, we're gonna take a look at our confetti stencil. And this is a two-step stencil, so you do two of these layers to create a really cool and fun background. And I love these confetti looks for birthday cards, of course. It looks amazing and it gives a cool look, but honestly, it's a fun pattern no matter what. And so right now, we're gonna try out just a basic two-color confetti background, and I'll show you some other ideas with it afterwards. So here, we're gonna take some merman ink and just start to ink over the stencil. Super quick and easy and such a fun little background. One of the reasons I love this background background too is I feel like it has some major Saved by the Bell vibes uh, and I just loved that show growing up so I think this little pattern is so fun and kind of a fun nod to the 80s. So here you can see we've got our merman and what we're going to do is we're going to take the next stencil and we're going to lay it over top and you'll look through that stencil and make sure that it lines up nice. So you'll see they're going to fit right in those openings. So I'm just looking through making sure all my confetti pieces are looking nice and centered in my card and then I'm going to start laying over some sunflower ink. Ink, so just some nice ink. You can see I made a mistake there and used my uh, my blue ink by mistake on my yellow, uh, but I switched to the right blender brush and now you can see what a fun and cute little pattern this is. This works great on both landscape and portrait and it's just adorable and so much fun for creating patterns and backgrounds for birthday cards using the tiny birthday friends and those giant birthday dies. Now, of course, what's a confetti background without a rainbow look? So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I have some guava ink, and then here we're gonna have some carrot ink. Next, we'll have sunflower. Then we'll do a freshly cut grass, then merman, and then fresh lavender. And I just love this pattern. It's super easy to do. You don't have to do any kind of complicated blending. I'm just going between my colors there. You can see in kind of a diagonal pattern and there's no right or wrong way to do this. And then I'm just filling in the rest with my merman and then adding my purple. And how adorable is that? Now, one thing I love about this stencil, if you want a less dense pattern, you can just use it with just the one stencil and just be done. But of course, I wanted to add some more color. So I'm gonna layer the second stencil on top, making sure all of my openings there are in the blank areas of my pattern. I'll hold that in place there with my magnets and now I'm gonna do the same exact pattern with my color. So I'm gonna do that same diagonal and just kind of filling it in. And once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see I'm kind of buffing off some of the color there. I realized my colors were kind of blending together in a weird way. So I kind of buffed off some of the ink when there would be a little bit too much before I switched to the next one. So I'm gonna buff off some of that green and now switch to the merman ink. And then I'll finish up with the fresh lavender. And you can see that rainbow pattern pattern is just so much fun. Look how cute that is. I just love it. I can't wait to use this as a background on a card. Now we just created some bold patterns on white cardstock, but you can also use this stencil with a more tone on tone look. So here I'm going to take our awesome mermaid cardstock and we're gonna go on top with merman ink, which is just a slightly darker ink. And that's gonna give us a really subtle pattern, but it's gonna add a little extra something to our plain cardstock. So this is a really fun way to use it too. We're also gonna be doing a really cool ink blending technique in a video coming up tomorrow with this confetti stencil as well. So I'm excited for you guys to see that.
So now you'll see I'm using the same color. So I'm not doing two colors. We're just gonna fill in the whole pattern all with the same color so that we have a more subtle background for one of our cards if you didn't want something quite as bold. And you'll see that that's really, really fun as well. For this version, you'll see that we did it in more of the portrait style. So landscape or portrait, this background looks great. And here's a look at a two color contrasting pattern on a rainbow ink blended version and on a more tone on tone look. So I just love these so much and I hope you guys do too. So now we're gonna be creating four awesome cards for this video. So Shari's gonna take it away and I'll be coming back in just a little bit. I'm gonna be recreating a card by Elena today and she made this really fun card using the sunburst backdrop. So I've cut that from some white cardstock and I'm actually just going to flip it over, put that circle that cuts out in the middle back into the center and I'm just gonna use some tape to hold it in place because we're not gonna take this out, we're gonna keep it like it's one piece. So that tape will just hold that in place like one back panel. And I've also cut a frame out of some white cardstock as well. Now I'm using some different colors than she used in her card. I decided to make mine with some yellows and oranges and reds and use some warm colors where she used purples and blues on hers. So you can see I started out with some scattered straw distress ink, but this yellow wasn't as bright as I wanted it. I wanted a really bright sunshiny yellow. So I have switched over to my Lawn Fawn Sunflower ink. I'm using that same blending brush and you can see we're getting this much brighter, happier yellow color. And I'm just making sure that I pull it out enough to where it's gonna completely cover behind my die cut. Elena used the happy birthday to you die cut and in my card I'm actually going to use just the giant happy birthday. I'm going to use watercolor wishes rainbow for my sentiment and I'm going to cut it out of the orange paper that's in this paper pack. I'm going to turn my die so that I get some nice stripes in there but I didn't want them directly across so I'm turning it a little bit to the side and then I can go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of this panel and glue it directly to my card base and then before I assemble things on top of it I thought with this yellow it would be fun to add some gold metallic splatters kind of like confetti this will add some more texture and you'll also get some shine when the light hits that metallic now I'm going to add that white stitch frame that I cut earlier. This just gives that edge a nice finishing touch and I like the look of this white on white that Elena did. I'm going to use the new Tiny Friends birthday characters and I have already colored and cut out a bunch of characters to use on my card. So I can go ahead and put down that die cut and I'm just gonna center it up in the middle and turn it to one side so that it's not quite straight. I like the look of this sort of turn to the side. It just looks so much fun. And then I'm gonna add my little characters around. So I'm adding two of these to the top, like they're popping up out of the top of that happy birthday sentiment. And then I'm gonna hang my pinata from the H in birth. Elena had hers in one of the letters, which I just thought was so much fun. And then of course I need my little guy down here that is trying to bust open the pinata. And his little friend, the cat, is gonna get all the goodies when they fall out. I just have a feeling. I've also got that little dog to put on the left side and then the balloons which can just float up there in the sky and then I cut out the tiny little cupcakes I thought it was sized perfectly to go with that little dog and then I decided it needed one more thing on that side so I colored and cut out the stack of presents and I'm just going to add that on the other side of the cupcake and then I went in with some stardust stickles and added just a little dab of glitter to something on all the images. So mostly it was the party hats for the people and the animals. I added a little bit to the candle and to the presents as well. And then finally I'm going in with my white gel pen to add some accents to the letters. This is another thing that Elena did on her card and I just thought that it had a really cool look just to add a little bit of detail and give that sentiment a bit of a different look. 
And then here is my finished card inspired by Elena. I just love this happy, bright birthday scene and this big, bold sentiment. And here is a look at Elena's card that inspired my card today. I'm going to be making a bright rainbow birthday card today and I wanted to start using this rainbow stripe paper from the Really Rainbow collection. I'm just cutting it down to five and a half by four and a quarter and I'm just going to put some adhesive all over the back of it and put it directly on my card base as the start of this card so you get that bright happy stripe in the background. Then I'm going to put a white strip through the center going left to right and this is where my images and my sentiment are going to go. A fun way to make this with some added detail is I am going to use the smallest of the slimline stitch rectangles to cut this strip. So it's already cut to five and a half inches wide and then I can line up this rectangle and run it through my die cut machine and it's gonna cut off the top and the bottom and leave me a nice stitching detail, which I just think is so much fun. I'm using this long happy birthday sentiment from the giant birthday messages stamp set and I'm just lining it up along the bottom and I'm leaving some space above it because I'm gonna stamp some of my birthday friends. So I am not doing any die cutting of these images on this card. I'm just going to stamp all of this directly onto this white panel and color it. So this would be actually a great card that you could mass produce a bunch if you just wanna stamp a whole bunch and then sit in front of the TV and color. You could stamp a whole bunch and have them ready to go and then you could color them differently depending on who you're sending the card to. But I just think this is a really fun way to make a whole bunch of cards with these cute little birthday friends and not have to die cut them. So I'm just lining them up where I want them. I've got a collection of three here. I've got some little groupings. So I have a person with a dog on one side and a person with a cat on one side. And in the center then I've got two with blowing the little party horns and I put that little cupcake in between them. So you could change up the configuration of all these little pieces and still stamp a whole bunch and have a bunch of these panels ready to go. So I've picked out some colors of my Copic markers here based on and matching the rainbow stripe paper. And I've just laid them out in the correct order and I'm doing some really quick coloring, coloring each of those letters a different color of that rainbow. I actually changed my yellow, so I'm gonna change it up to that Y38. I felt like that matched a little bit better when I actually got it colored onto the paper. And once I get to the end, to that purple one there, which is my last color, I'll just go back to that first color, that RV23, and just fill in the rest of the letters going in that same order that I started with. And then now I can color all my little people. So I think that this would be fun to stamp a bunch of these panels and then color the people differently on every one. I just think that would be good coloring practice and it would be a fun way to make a bunch of different cards using the same design. So I'm starting out by coloring all their faces and their hands and then I'll go back through and color their clothes and their hair and their little accessories using the same colors that I pulled out for the letters. So I kept all those to the side and that way I don't have too many colors going on. I can use those same colors so that their clothes will match the pattern paper that I'm using and everything will coordinate. So I did pull in a couple other colors for the dog so that it's not a bright yellow color. It's more of a golden color. And of course I pulled in some other colors for their hair on this particular card, but I did think about giving them all some colored hair because 
I mean, teal hair would be pretty fun. <laughs> so I did pull in just a couple other colors to balance out mostly neutrals to balance out those bright colors. I'm going to put some foam adhesive all along the back of that panel now that it's all colored. So it's all just a one layer panel, no die cuts. So this is the only dimension I'm going to have on my card is popping this strip up off that background. And this card is pretty much done. So I wanted to add some embellishments to it. Of course, I always wanna add a little bit of glitter. And I added some glitter to the cupcake and their party hats and their party horns just so there's just some simple shine and shimmer. And then I thought it would be fun to fill in all the letters with that same glitter. So you're gonna see the color through that glitter and then sentiment will just have that nice glittery shine. And then I added some of the little rainbow wheel clay embellishment pieces just to kind of fill in the card a little bit and give it a nice fun party look. It kind of looks like confetti got thrown around using these rainbow wheels. I also like that the rainbow wheels match the rainbow stripe paper pretty well. And then here is that finished card that you could just create a whole bunch of, just stamping a bunch of these in your Misty. I'm gonna be making a simple card using the new confetti stencils. There are two of those, and when you line them up and use different colors, they fill in that confetti. I'm gonna start off with just a white card base. Like I said, this is gonna be a very simple card. And I'm using my blending brush and some mermaid ink to do my first layer of confetti directly onto this card base. So I'm not even making a panel. This is a really quick and easy card. And I'm just inking right onto this white card base. So once I've got all that filled in with the mermaid ink, I'm gonna pull away my stencil. And I'm using that little Lawn Fawn website that's etched in there as my guide. I'm making sure this one is oriented the same way so that website is reading correctly and at the bottom and I'm using my grid mat to line it up and you can see how the openings in this second stencil fill in some of the gaps that the first stencil left. So for this one I'm going to go in with a different color. I'm using some bubblegum ink for a bright pink ink and I'm just going all over making sure that whole card base is filled with the pink confetti. I can pull away my stencil and I have this really fun confetti background. I'm going to use the new giant happy birthday die for my sentiment. This card I felt had like a save by the bell kind of vibe with that background so I picked some really bright colors for my sentiment as well. And I'm going to offset them so you get that purple shadow. I'm also going to add foam tape all over the back of this so that it's popped up off the background so you've got a little bit of dimension going on because really we just have a background in the sentiment. So I'm using my liquid glue to offset them and then here's all that foam tape all over the back. And then I went in with some neon green stickles and added some squiggles and some dots. I just forgot to turn my camera on so you can see they are there now and you get this really fun birthday card that would brighten anybody's day that didn't take any time hardly at all to create. I just think it is so much fun and you can make so many of these. Thank you for those amazing card ideas, Shari. Now I'm gonna be working with the Happy Birthday to You die. And what I did first is I die cut our stitched wood grain backdrop out of some craft card stock. And then I'm gonna die cut the Happy Birthday to You from that. And that's gonna give us some wood grain letters. So it's kind of a fun way to add texture to a die cut. And look how pretty that looks. Next up, we're gonna die cut the same die out of two more card stocks, paper bag and white. And then we're gonna layer these offsetting them a little bit. And that's gonna give us two things. One, it's gonna give us a really cool kind of drop shadow look, kind of like Shari did on the previous card. But it's also gonna give us some dimension as well because we'll have three layers of cardstock on there. So it's gonna give us a nice pop, which I think will look really great. And you can see just how fun it looks. I love offsetting them. Like I never get over how cool it is. I put my liquid glue down, I layer it on top, and then I just shift it a little bit to the right. And it's just the coolest and most fun look. 
Now these giant birthday die cuts are also a great fit for our tropical leaves backdrop. So we make sure when we design these things to have everything mix and match really well. And so that's what we're gonna be doing here is layering these two dies together. So I've die cut my background here out of some cilantro cardstock, and then I'm taking some Lucky Clover ink and I'm just inking the edges of it. By starting with a colored cardstock, it's gonna make my ink blending job much easier. So I can just blend on that ink and give it this really cool gradient look that almost looks like ink blended the whole thing, but I actually didn't. Now, once I started adding that Lucky Clover, I kind of wanted a little bit more dimension and maybe a little bit more blue in there. So I took some peacock feathers and I'm adding that to the outside edges. I'll go back and forth between the two colors just to make sure the blending looks nice. And now you can see, I mean, look how beautiful this is. And when you put a background on it, it really sticks out. At first I was thinking of using a pattern paper for the background, but I was really in an ink blending mood. So I wanted to create kind of this cool night sky kind of feel. So this here is some Mermaid Lagoon, and then we're gonna go ahead and mix it with some other colors. So we've got some Broken China here, and then we'll finish up the ink blend with some Salvage Patina, which is that new beautiful color. And it's gonna give us a really, really cool gradient. I'll be going back and forth between each of the colors to create a nice seamless blend since the colors are kind of far apart from each other. So we're gonna blend a little bit and then we'll go in, go back and forth and make that look really, really nice. To give the background a little more dimension and kind of like a dusk kind of tropical fun feel to it, I went ahead and just sprayed some clean water onto it and that water is going to react with the ink um, and give some really cool splatters. And I'm just picking up the excess water with a dry paper towel and I really love how this is turning out. I feel like it gives it a little bit of sparkle. We're going to take this piece and we're going to add it to a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. And then we're gonna do some fun layering with that Tropical Leaves backdrop die. So we have that one that we ink blended earlier, and then I'm gonna die cut another one out of some Rainforest cardstock, which is this really nice deep green. Now, if you take these dies and you kind of see right here, we've got them going the same direction, that would give a really cool drop shadow look. So they're kind of just layered behind a little bit, but I wanted even more dimension. So what I'm gonna do is take that die and I'm gonna rotate it there 180 degrees and then layer it. And look at that, isn't that beautiful? So it's a really cool way to get even more dimension out of this Tropical Leaves backdrop die. So I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back of the Rainforest piece, and that's going to get glued directly down onto that really cool backdrop that we just created. And I mean, even just like that, isn't that so pretty? Oh, I just love it. But now for some extra dimension, we're going to add some foam tape to the back of the piece that we ink blended. And I'm just using some of the iCraft foam tape that you can cut down into thin little strips and going all the way around that rectangle. And now we're going to layer that on top. And oh my gosh, I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I feel like it just adds so much to the background just by adding that little layer of the Rainforest cardstock. Now here we have that happy birthday to you die that we worked on at the beginning. And we're gonna add some more of that foam tape to the background so that we can layer it. And now it's gonna be the same height as those tropical leaves because it's the same foam as we used on the tropical leaf on the top there. So we're gonna layer that right on top and you can see what a great fit it is for the tropical leaf backdrop. Now, honestly, right here, I love the card as is. I don't even think you would need to add some stamped images, but of course, I couldn't help myself. I just love the Toucan Do It stamps so much. So I went ahead and stamped and colored some images from the set. So I've got those awesome jaguars and then the cute little lizard, which looks really, really cute climbing on the letters. And one of the things I love about these giant word dies, the happy birthdays, the sending big hugs, is that they've got really great places for characters to be hanging out on. So the Toucan sitting right on top of that bee is so cute. And then the other one flying onto the why. I just think it's so fun to find places to put our characters on. The tiny birthday friends are also really great for layering on top of these letters. Now the Tropical Leaves Backdrop Die has this cute little flower and flower center. So I went ahead and die cut it from the brand new Watercolor Wishes rainbow paper. We're going to layer in those yellow flower centers and then add those flowers on there. And which you see when we add that pink, I feel like it ties the whole whole card together. I put one of the flowers on the little jaguar there, which I thought was really cute. And the rest, we're just going to kind of scatter around the card, just kind of seeing how they're going to look the best. And then I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue actually with my pokey tool. So I just sprayed some liquid glue on a piece of scrap cardstock there. And then I'm just going to pick up the glue with the pokey tool. And I find that one of the easiest ways to add on tiny images, because I can just add a little bit of glue to the back. So I'm just layering some flowers behind the letters all around the outside. And look at this 
guys, isn't this card so much fun? I had such a blast making it. I got to get inky and have so much fun doing it. And then of course we needed to add a little glitter. So I'm gonna take out the glitter pen and add glitter to the flower centers. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of glitter to that little lizard on the top. I thought it'd be fun to do that on his spots. And so it just adds a little extra sparkle and a little extra something fun to this card. I had so much fun not only using the happy birthday dies and layering my stamped characters on it, but also mixing and matching it with the tropical stuff shows how great this die is because it can work with so many stamp sets and dies in your stash. And then here is a look back at the adorable card Shari made. I love how she used the happy birthday die with the tiny friends, used their tiny friends on their own for a fun and easy to replicate card, and the Saved by the Bell vibes on this card make me very happy. Next up, we have some beautiful cards by the design team. And first up, Grace, oh my goodness, look at that rainbow confetti background she made. She used the swish and pop pull tab to create an interactive card where the pinata is sliding back and forth. And then she used the tiny birthday friends and just the to you part of the happy birthday to you to create such a fun design. I am just in love with this card and I can't wait to make one just like it. It's so much fun. Here, this card is so sweet. I love the letters cut out of pattern paper here by Maureen and how she layered all the tiny birthday friends in. So fun, so cute, and it makes me smile. This is the card by Elena that inspired Shari to make hers, and I love that sunburst backdrop in the background and how she cut her letters from the new watercolor, which is rainbow paper. This card by Lynette is so much fun. It's completely die cut, and the party balloon dies are a perfect match for the happy birthday to you dies. Here Tammy blew me away with her beautiful scene and she shows that the happy birthday looks really great on a slip line card too, which is so cool. Lynette's confetti background is so much fun and I love how she has her magic messages right in the center, super cute and super adorable. Here Elise gives us a little peek at a stamp set we're gonna be featuring tomorrow. It's so cute with that plaid background and those tiny friends all around that giant birthday messages stamp set. I just love it and think it's so sweet and fun. Here, this card by Rebecca is adorable and super easy to recreate and create a bunch of. Her background is using the brand new watercolor, which is rainbow paper, and then those little tiny fence peeking out from behind the letters is just so sweet and fun. Ivy's card is just gorgeous, and she created a shaker, which I absolutely love and looks amazing behind those tropical leaves. And I love how the Happy Birthday to You die cut is a perfect match for the forest backdrop, too, so you really can get lots of look with these die cuts. Here, this card by Letitia is beautiful, and that background there is a brand new stencil we're going to be featuring in a couple of days. And then this card by Megan is the one that inspired me to make my card today. I loved how she used the tropical characters with those awesome letters and how she added that wood grain detail. So pretty and so fun. And then this card by Audrey is beautiful, and it showcases a brand new stripe die that we're going to be showing you in just a couple of days, too. And then here, Lynette made such a fun slimline card. I love how she die cut everything from the brand new Watercolor Wishes rainbow. It really gives a lot of dynamic look to her die cuts. And then this confetti background, how fun are these colors? I absolutely adore it. And using a scallop circle like that is a great way to frame out some beautiful little tiny friend scenes. Lynette was on a card making roll and made this beautiful slimline card. And I love the happy birthday die cut cut from that brand new paper in the Watercolor Wishes rainbow. Those dots on it are so much fun. So we cannot wait to see what kind of amazing birthday cards you guys are going to make with these new products, so make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!